Hi, my name is Lembit and this is part one of my Subassembly Composer course. Today I am going to cover the Subassembly Composer interface. So yeah, let's get started. Up here you have the menu bar. There are only a few options. Uh, under the file, file column we have just all the basics. Open, save, creating new, you can check out your recent files or just exit the Subassembly Composer. Simple as that. Under the edit, only two options, undo, redo, but I usually use the shortcuts on my keyboard. So yeah, under the view tab, uh, you, can you can open or close the windows that are here on the layout. I do not recommend doing that since every single window is useful. It has its own, own functions that you always need, so please don't close these ones. But if you manage to mess up the layout, you can always come here, the view tab, and click the restore default layout. And everything is back to normal again. Then we have the define enumeration. I'm, to, I'm going to cover this one in the next videos. But it's very useful to keep that in mind. And then we have the help tab. In the view help, you can you go, go into help page of the Autodesk and there are some 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 topics that you want to check out later on but i'm going to cover these ones in the next video as well so you don't have to but if you want to feel free to <laughs> and then we have the about sub assembly composer i'm running the 2021 uh, version of this uh, software you may run uh, the older one or the newer one it doesn't really matter the differences are so small that you you won't you won't notice the difference so yeah it doesn't matter and that's about it that's the menu bar let's get started with the windows that we have here on the layout let's get started with the toolbox uh, in the toolbox you have all these uh, nodes that you can use to create your custom sub assembly you have the geometry nodes advanced geometry auxiliary workflow and miscellaneous Everything is used to create your custom sub-assembly. You can use these points and links and shapes and everything by clicking on them and dragging and dropping them into the flowchart. In the flowchart, you're going to be 50% of your working that you do, you're going to be in the flowchart. So keep that in mind. So yeah, everything works as simple as that. Drag and drop. I'm not going to cover right now every single function that how what what every single node that it has to do with the sub assembly. I'm going to cover this one in the next episode, but keep that in mind that everything works by dragging and dropping. Simple as that. For example, I have dropped this one point point one. It automatically names the point. If you have multiple points, it's going to create the in the order. 0.2, 0.3, 0.5, and so on. Uh, by clicking on the point, you have the properties. For each each point or or node or everything that you're going to drop here has its own properties. So yeah, keep that also in mind. Um, in the flowchart, I recommend you to keep everything uh, clean as much as possible, because for example, if you're going to create some uh, some uh, very hard, very complex uh, sub-assembly, custom sub-assembly. Then, uh, for example, two, two months later, you come back and you have to make some adjustments. Then uh, you have to keep the flowchart clean. Otherwise, you're, you're going to spend a lot of time understanding what you have created and how to change that. You can, uh, in the flowchart, you can uh, drag the points or everything that you drop here just by dragging them or you can use the arrow keys to adjust the positioning in the flowchart or you can select uh, multiple ones by holding control and move them as well so yeah simple trick and connecting these points are simple as well you can uh, delete the link between the points by just uh, um, using the delete button and you can just uh, connect them once again by 
our Angular mouse on the node. You can see all these small dots here. And you can just connect like that. That's about it. As simple as that. So yeah, let's get on with the preview tab. In the preview tab, uh, you're going to simulate everything that you want to do in the Seal 3D. You can do it right here. So it's it won't it it will save you a lot of time and their energy. So basically, if it won't work here, it won't work in the Seal 3D. Simple as that. <laughs> For instance, I have this point right here, and I have the second point, which is coming from point one. I'm going to give it a delta x of 5 meters. My units are uh, in meters, kilometers, so if you, for example, you're from America, then uh, you're going to have to use the other metric system. So, yeah, about that. So, yeah, we have the, for example, 5 meters, and that's about it. You can see how it uh, just create the point two from point one delta x five meters and simple as that and I have a link between two points you can just everything you see the preview tab simulates that so and in the preview tab we have the roadway mode and layout mode the roadway mode is used here uh, to simulate everything that you do so you can keep track on that uh, the layout mode is basically uh, the preview of the sub-assembly. So basically, if you have your custom sub-assembly, you click layout mode. This is the, this is the preview of the sub-assembly that you're going to see in the Civil 3D. So if it's it's ugly, then most likely you have to some, do some adjustments here. So it would be nice nice preview in the Civil 3D. I'll I'll show you later on how it works, but just just keep that in mind. Here you can see the codes and the comments. For example, if this uh, link one is, uh, for example, the top of the, for example, pavement, I can name it uh, pave. But everything here in the point codes has to be in the like that. So. The point two is now a pave. You can also add this, for example, on the link of this uh, thing. So uh, this link between two points is now called pave. And all the point codes and the link codes are connected to this uh, sub to the uh, code set style that you have, for example, in your company, or if you're using the default one by the Autodesk, then you then you have to follow this. Uh, also the screws, for example, the pave or the, for example, the base or, and so on. So it, uh, it will display it uh, correctly in the, in the civil 3D. But uh, if you don't, if you don't know anything about the code set styles, then there is a, there are multiple videos on YouTube that how to create one and how to set it up. And uh, I recommend you to check out these ones as well. If you, if you, if you are not familiar with the code set styles. So yeah, that's about it. And then we have this uh, smaller window right here, which starts with the packet settings. So basically, we ha here we have the sub-assembly name. Uh, this name will be displayed in the seal 3D. For example, if I write here uh, intersection, for example, 1, uh, this one this one will be displayed in the uh, sub-assembly, uh, in the seal 3D. Also, the description will be displayed right here. Um, I usually keep it cl as clean as possible as well. For example, I have the sub-assembly name. I have the Excel sheet with the sub-assembly name. In the description, I usually write, uh, for example, a version no, 2.0. And if I have created some changes or adjustments to the uh, su custom sub-assembly, I just uh, change the description of it. And in the Excel sheet, I will just uh, write a short description what has changed from the last version. So I always have to 
you always know what changed, what's what's new and so on. It's 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 much easier to keep track with everything. So yeah. That's my that's my small recommendation how to keep it uh, organized. Uh, next one is a health file. Oops, I can't keep it without a name. <laughs> well, next one is a health file. You can uh, attach a file, for example, PDF file that you're going to use, uh, which will have the, for example, the explanation how the sub assembly works, your custom sub assembly. So, for instance, you, if you're working in the company, you're the one making these custom sub assemblies, and you have uh, other engineers that are using these ones. So, you don't have to later on explain to every engineer how this sub assembly works. You can attach a PDF file to the custom sub assembly, and everyone ha can check it out when they are using this sub assembly. So, it's, it's very helpful. I recommend creating these help files. And then we have the image. Image you can attach and preview image to the your custom sub assembly that well it will have some sort of preview so you will understand what you're dealing with and it will be also will be displayed in the sealed really so yeah uh, next one input output parameters so yeah uh, here are the parameters that you can create and which one which will be displayed in sealed 3d in properties tab for instance, you can create a pave height or anything that has to do with the static numbers. For example, you can't use the space between their names. It won't do that, let you do that. But you can use it on the, on the mark. So yeah, this one will be displayed in the uh, properties in the Civil 3D. You can make a display name, which can't have the space bar, space, <laughs> space between the uh, two words. Uh, so here you go. This one will be displayed in the sealed 3D, and this one you will be using in your uh, custom sub assembly in the sub assembly composer. I'll ch I'll show how this works in later on. So yeah, these are parameters here. You can create as much as you want. Pave height. I don't know. Uh, sub sub based uh, depth and so on so everything can be put uh, done here there's a multiple types because you have the double you have the string create slope yes or no uh, uh, thingy i'll show this one is very useful for uh, all the things then you have two sides super elevation slope direction potential pivot so yeah depends what you need everything is at here then you have uh, the input or output option. Usually these ones are input, but I will show you how later on how to use the output one for some uh, useful things that you can create. There's a default value, and then we have the description thing. Here in the description, you can write uh, like a few sentences what these these functions can do, these properties. For for example, as I mentioned before, if you have a team of engineers and you're the one creating, then these custom sub assemblies, then you can write a short description, and this description will be displayed in the properties tab as well by hovering over your mouse on the uh, display name. It will show you the description, so it's it's quite useful. Uh, I usually use these ones to quickly explain what uh, what uh, what these parameters do. But yeah, next one is the target parameters. Here as well, you can make different target parameters. There are only three types. You have elevation, offset, and surface. Surface usually used for, you know, existing surface and so on. And all the other things I most likely are already familiar with. So yeah. And also you can enable the preview right here. You can always... Uh, by using these parameters here, you can always uh, simulate all the things in the preview tab. So keep that in mind. Uh, next one is super elevation. Here, as it as the name says, you can create super elevations for your custom sub assembly. Uh, then we have the count. Uh, it's for the railways. As simple as that. 
Uh, and then we have the event viewer. Event viewer is is very useful. Here you can see all the uh, errors that can be done that it, that will be uh, that may may occur in the CU 3D. So keep track on this one because these errors that you say can see here most likely you will see in the CU 3D as well if something is something is missing or something is not working so i recommend i recommend keeping track on this one so yeah that's about the interface of this sub assembly composer see you in the next part